teach you how to cook food. And the first portion is basically just going to be a scientific explanation of what's going on, what I'm doing, how everything's going to react, blah, 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 etc. Um, what I'm going to be cooking is a breakfast that contains sausage. It's going to be, the sausage is going to be used for sausage gravy. Uh, bacon, for example, you can never go wrong with bacon. Bacon's always good to have in a meal, unless you're vegetarian, then by all means, Eggs, you know, I can never go wrong with eggs. Onions and bell peppers, which will be mixed in the eggs to be cooked. It's gonna be scrambled eggs. Uh, and some potatoes. Now, fun fact about potatoes: uh, they're full of vitamin C, and they are good for energy. Let me wake up. Let's start with the meats. What do the meats do? Well, when you heat meat up, you get a reaction which is called browning. Now, browning of foods happens because each molecule of the food reacts differently when heated or exposed to energy. Food is made up of water, carbs, fat, and protein. These carbs are chains of sugar molecules, and when the carbs are heated up, they go into a combustion reaction. So essentially, we are burning the carbohydrates, and the flavor changes. <sighs> Moving on to what amino acids are, and they have a similar bond energy, such as carbohydrates, and when cooked with carbs, they end up creating a new flavor compound. This is called a Maillard reaction. ways that you can get energy into the food that, that'll break the bonds of the food you have conduction convection and radiation the examples that I can give of this would be stovetop oven and microwave cooker the best ways to do it now that we've talked about the meats which are always delicious gotta move on to the eggs because eggs are important good for you. And uh, for my cooking, we're going to be well, scrambling. And well, to determine if an egg quality is good without, you know, breaking them open or anything, people ended up discovering that if you cook a candle near the egg and this the candle in the dark, look at the egg, and you look around, the egg would, uh, you'd be able to spot blood spots on the yolk, brown blood spots, and many other things. Candling is done by taking a light source of the shell of an egg. Simple as that. Let's move on to some more facts about comes down to meat, there are three main cells that are found in the meat. You have uh, fats, proteins, and well, most of it's water. Water is found on most, thi well, in and on the planet, <laughs> but it is found in most things. And uh, in terms of availability, it is really common. Really, really, really common. Also, protein is a essential part of most foods, and they are pretty much they pretty much do everything in our body, or meat in particular. Fats. Well, they are a source of energy and are very good when you melt them down. For example, butter. Butter is delicious. Love it. When I cook bacon, I usually have about a spoon. Spoonful or two of butter in there? Probably not good for you, but. Mm. Well, it's definitely not good for you. <laughs> Let's go on 
to red meat. Now, what is red meat compared to white meat? Well, in simple terms, uh, red meat is like stamina muscle. It, it has a lot of my myoglobin as compared to the white meat, which has less. However, the white meat is meant for uh, quicker movement, like burst of speed, for example. Uh, you have a human, which contains mostly red meat, which, which was built for stamina, really. And then, compared to that of a chicken, which is basically just, uh, oh no, I'm about to die, I'm gonna run that way. You know, real simple. Real simple. So more facts about it. Let's see. Meat is mostly water, but with no fat. That's bad. And, uh... Bacteria. Bacteria on meat. A lot of people are afraid that if they don't cook the meat right, they'll get sick from it. Well, a lot of bacteria is usually found on the outer layer of food. So you don't always have to worry about the inside containing any of those ads. Unless you... There's always there's some instances of worms, but if you cook it at a high temperature, like on a grill, if you cook it on a stove, cook it in the oven, you shouldn't have to worry about that at all. At a very high temperature, well, anywhere from 350, 400, usually feels like it's a little too hot. <sighs> Let's move on to vegetables. Vegetables are always good for you. Don't get me wrong. I, w I will avoid greens possible throughout my whole life, but when it comes down to it, I have to eat my vegetables, good to eat, but if I can avoid eating them, I most likely will, ah, let's go on, well, let's talk about what makes up a plant, well, you have the root, you have the stem, the leaves, you know, taking sunlight, and get specifically in the form of sugar, which is plant energy, and you have the flowers, which are the sexual organs that serve to reproduce, and these flowers will go on to becoming fruits, which end up spawning more plants, and then this whole cycle repeats. <clears throat> more specifically about vegetables, what, what do I really want to talk about? I want to talk about potatoes and onions, because that's what we're going to be dealing with, potatoes, onions, and when it comes to the world peppers. They are fruits, sure. But when you talk about culinary terms, a lot of people refer to it as a vegetable because of its grain. That's what they would do. In my opinion, that tastes the same. <sighs> so what I want to talk about. As I mentioned earlier, potatoes have a very high amount of vitamin C. And some people don't know this, but there are two classes of potatoes. Melee potatoes and the wax potatoes. Interesting facts for you guys. Uh, also, onions can do aerolizing, which is a form of defense which prevents animals from eating it. Uh, for example, the aerolizing is basically putting acid in the air. It's why your eyes get watery when you cut through an onion. And some ways to prevent that acid from reaching you is... Uh, Freezing it and using a sharp knife. If you use a sharp knife, it will break it less and it should be a cleaner cut, which means it won't blow in your face. Uh, now on to milk and dairy. Well, you're going to be making a sausage gravy. Let's get this in camera view. Sausage gravy. Now when I'm talking about sausage gravy, you're going to make some good sausage gravy. So, what's going to be involved in that? Well, starch and milk. Needed. You could use flour. And for uh, every spoonful of flour used, well, every spoonful of starch used, you should use two for the flour. It's the opposite when you're going backwards, you know. Alright, so, let's talk about some interesting facts about uh, some milk and dairy. For those of you that don't know, you are a mutant if you can digest milk properly. Normally, humans can't digest milk. Most 
mammals cannot digest milk after a certain age. Humans, if you can do that past a certain age, like uh, past being a toddler, you're a mutant. Moving on to pasteurization. Pasteurization came around from a man named Louis Pasteur. He found that if you eat milk somewhere close to but below the boiling point, it would end up killing the bacteria and making it safer to drink and overall just expanding the whole milk market. Uh, also, some other, there's two things. One thing about butter, one thing about milk. So milk would be considered a less solid way to transfer fat between things. Additionally, creaminess is solid fat that's suspended in liquid. I don't know if anyone really knew that. Now moving on to artificial butter. Or margarine butter, I'm sorry. It's, uh, what's artificial butter? It is made by having fat combined with skin milk. talk about science yay science is always fun love experimenting never stop anyways let's move on into the whole food section cooking it well first off what you want to do at the start is you want to take butter and bacon you want to put it in the thing you want to put it in the pan you want to make sure it's at a high temperature and you want to crisp it right you want to get nice good bacon then you want to move on to the sausage now this part of the sausage it's called browning same thing with bacon you put it in a high temperature the molecules go under a combustion reaction and boom everything goes from red to brown it is important that you do this because red meat tastes terrible you do not want to add salt or pepper in this point why because at the next part you want to take uh Four tablespoons. The next point when you add it into the gravy. To, now to make the gravy, you want to add four tablespoons of cornstarch into a cup. And then you want to put half a cup of milk in there. You want to stir it up. You want to make sure it all. You want to make sure it's warm milk. You want to stir it up. Make sure it all goes around together. And then you want to pour it all into this pot. Now. If it's all clumpy at the bottom, it's fine. Just make sure it gets in the dang bowl. And then you want to put it in there, and you want to stir it slowly. Very slowly, because it's important that it all gets, comes together. The next part is hash browns. This is the best part. So basically, you get canola oil, you put it in a pan, and you spread around the onions that you have cubed. You want to cube onions, by the way. And uh, when you spread them around, you wait for them to brown a little bit, you salt and pepper them, and you make sure you have to make sure that they are spread out evenly why because if you do not it will not cook well enough once you've done that you have to wait a little bit wait make sure they brown to about this far and then you start flipping them make sure you salt and pepper every time you flip after that you want to make sure you have some eggs 10 eggs ought to do it if you're feeding a family five eggs for yourself I would suggest well maybe four or three depends on your appetite and then you want to make sure you have the bell peppers sliced up, right? You want to have them sliced up into thin lines like this. As thin as you can, thin lines. Um, make sure you cook it at a high temperature. You want to make sure they're very soft. After they become soft, I suggest putting a lid on. It'll help it uh, steam and become softer faster. You want to make sure you put the onion in and cook the onions with them after the bell peppers are soft because they take longer to cook. So, when you put the onions in, they shouldn't take too long to cook maybe two or three minutes and after that you make sure everything is ready for the eggs so when you put the eggs in you're basically just going to pour it in there just pour it all around and then you want to constantly stir it you want to make sure that it is scrambled after that you will come to the finished project which is bacon bell pepper onion eggs salt and peppered 